This morning, we are very fortunate to be able to bring you uh, an outstanding speaker, an outstanding soccer player to come share some of his thoughts, thinking. I know that we have many soccer players out here right now watching uh, us this morning. But before we begin, I expect uh, make sure that we're taking care of our business. Uh, you know that when we have a guest in the house, that we act our land room lying away to make sure that we're respectful. There'll be times at the end of the program for questions and answers. Uh, so as you hear the presentation, if you have any questions, we'll invite you toward the end of the session to ask those questions. But this morning we have Luis and Ms. Hoos who will be introducing our guest speaker this morning. Thank you for your attention. Good morning, everyone. We have a very special guest. He's a native of Greensboro, North Carolina, and attended the University of North Carolina, where he played soccer for four seasons. In 2001, he began his professional soccer career in the MLS, playing for the San Jose Earthquakes. While playing for the Earthquakes, he won two MLS championships. In 2006, he moved with the club to Houston. In that same year, the Houston Dynamo won their first MLS championship and repeated their success in 2007. He played six seasons for the Dynamo, playing in 96 regular season matches, in addition to nine playoff contests. In 2011, he retired and accepted a position in the Dynamo for an office where he now works with the Dynamo U16 team and serves as a commentator for the Dynamo broadcast. In addition, he's also very involved with the Dynamo carry with the charitable arm of the organization. One of the focuses of the of childhood will be to do physical training, nutrition, education, and healthy lifestyle and retirement activities. Please put your hands together. Please put your hands together and help me welcome from center back of Houston, Eddie Robinson. Good morning. How about one more round of applause for these young men? All right, I would like to make these next 15 to 20 minutes that I'm going to be speaking with you guys, I want to make it interactive. So I'm going to ask you, don't blurt out any answers, don't blurt out anything, raise your hands, okay, when I ask questions, because I really want to ask questions and I want to get you guys involved, all right? The first question I'm going to ask, to find out if you guys are awake and listening to what they had to say, how many MLS Cup championships have I won? Oh wow, your principal told me that you guys were fantastic and you listened. Nobody raised their hand, everybody just started flirting. Anybody know the answer? How many MLS Cup championships have I won? Young man. Loud, nice and loud, shout it out. Two, two in San Jose. How many in Houston? Still not seeing any hands. There he is. Three. Almost. Four. Let's see. So it wasn't one, and it wasn't three. Two. Okay, so we've broken it down. Now I'm going to test, test your guys' math skills. Somebody raise their hand and tell me what two plus two is. Young man. Four. set of values that when a kid comes into our program, we tell him, these are the standards that make up our character, these are the standards that we will require of you and your parents. I want to ask you guys, and again, raise your hands, don't go blurting out, what do you think some of the character traits are that we require of our players? Good shit, good shit, lollipop. Right. That, that, that's right. 
Sportsmanship. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. That is one. Respect. That is a huge one. I just wrote down a few of them in my, in my uh, notebook. Respect is one. I want to make sure that we get them all. I don't forget. I saw a hand over here. You can't point at someone. Who else? Come on. Come on. Young man, just above the guy who's got the soccer ball. Determination. How about committed? Similar, similar, right? Committed, that's one. Any more, any more guesses, ideas? Discipline. Very good. Excellent. Discipline. Confidence. Confidence. That is one of the ones that I really want to talk about today. These young men that were up here, before me, they display what? Confidence. Excellent. Excellent. Couple more. Couple more. With a pretty head there. Fairness. Fairness. How about teamwork? Similar, right? Teamwork. One more. There's one more that for me is the most important one. But, and I'll give you a hint, it's not something that you see with a lot of professional athletes. Way up at the top. Responsibility. That is one, but it's not the one I'm looking for. Last guess, and I'll tell you. Leadership, another very good one, but the one I'm looking for is humility. Humility, does everyone know, know what that means, humility? Does everyone know what it means to be humble? Yeah, I, I don't believe that a lot of professional athletes know what it means to be humble. A lot of them, they think they're better than everyone else, don't they? They put themselves ahead of everyone. They think their time's more important than others. They think they deserve certain benefits in society that others don't. That is the most important one. Okay, now, it's very easy for me to stand up here and give you guys examples of how those character traits relate to a sports atmosphere. But here's what I want to ask you. How do those character traits relate to a student, to a parent, to a worker who is a plumber? How do those things relate to people who aren't professional athletes, who live in the real world? Because guess what? Out of all 600, 500 people in this room, maybe, maybe, there will be one person that someday goes on to play professional sports, okay? And that's something that we tell our players when they come into the program. Out of every 150, 200 of you, one of you will play professional sports. So, with those character traits that we try to make, that we try to instill in our players, not only will they make them good soccer players, but they will make them good human beings. They will make them good human beings. So, can someone give me an example of honesty in the classroom? Yes. What if you see someone cheating on a test? Are you obligated to tell your teacher? I think yes. I, I, I heard a lot of answers. I heard a lot of answers. That's an example of being honest. What's another one? Was he honest with me? 
No. No. So guess what? I lose respect for his character. I can guarantee you that your teachers, if they find out you lied to them about not doing your homework, they'll lose a little bit of respect for your character. If you come in and tell them, I'm sorry, I was irresponsible, I was playing video games too late, before I knew it, my mom made me go to bed and I didn't have an opportunity to do my homework. Will they be disappointed in you? Yes. But instead of losing a little bit of respect for your character, they're gonna gain a little bit of respect for your character, right? What about teamwork? All right. I guess it means I'm doing a good job. What about teamwork? Who can give me a good example of teamwork in school? I see, I see an arm back there with the LSU. Soccer team. Soccer team. Good. What about in the classroom? Perfect. In a group. You're doing an activity together. The greater you get is not solely dependent on you. Some nights in training sessions, we will put guys in groups of three at the beginning of the day, and we'll have them on the ground, passing, moving, just basically getting warmed up. If one of those guys decides he wants to take the night off and he's not really interested in it, does that only affect him? Uh-uh. In fact, there's other two guys that are there. If you're in groups of three in your math class, let's say your teacher gives you a group of problems to solve, but you only have a limited time to do it. So you figure, hey, we'll split them up, we'll all get them done, it'll be easy. Well, one person, they don't want to do it. They're not feeling, they're not feeling good about it. Right? Time's called, two of you have done them, one of you has it. You just let down your other two classmates. Why? Because you're being selfish, right? Teamwork, teamwork. It's not just on the sports field with the soccer team. It's in the classroom. What about the business world? What about the business world? Someone came into my office the other day and said, hey, we want to do a, we want to do a youth soccer training, but we need a spot, we need a sponsor. We need someone to cover some of the fees for the teams coming in from out of town. Brought me with three other people and said, hey, can you guys do this? Can you guys work on this? Absolutely. Now, I can go in there and I can say, I don't have time. I got another meeting after this. Can't do it. Now, I don't really have another meeting after that, but I've just lost honesty, and I've just let my teammates down. Teamwork doesn't just matter on a sports field, on a basketball court, on a soccer field. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Confidence. About confidence. You can give me an example, not using the one I just used, of confidence in the classroom. Man, you know everything, don't you? Yes. Okay, all right. Confidence right there. That's your example. Fantastic. She tells me that she knows everything. Is that confidence or overconfidence? Confidence. All right, all right. Who else has an example? Believing in yourself. Can you give me a specific example of believing in yourself in the classroom? Presenting a project. Perfect. In training sessions, Sometimes things aren't going the way we want to, so I have to stop it. I will ask the player to help me demonstrate something, a certain play, a certain pass, a certain way to defend. So I ask him to pass me the ball. He knocks it over to his teammate, let his teammate do it. Doesn't have much confidence, does he? Doesn't show much confidence. You guys, let's say you get up in front of the class. And you have to give a speech on why Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. And you get up there, 
and you're the only person in your classroom that day that's dressed in a suit and tie. And everybody starts laughing at you, okay? I will knock you down a level or two, won't I? In the confidence department. But you say, you know what? I have respect for what I'm doing. I have respect for my teacher and my classmates, and I have respect for this project that I'm working on. And I'm going to present just like this, and I don't care what they think. That's confidence, isn't it? That's confidence. Do all of you have confidence? See? Who's confident? Who's confident in themselves in this room? Raise your hand. Who's confident that their preparation up to this point for the testing next week is good? Who's confident in that? Who's confident? Come on. I know there's more than this. I know there's more than this. I know that your teachers care way too much about you to leave you unprepared. Do you agree with me? Do you guys agree with me? They care way too much about you guys to leave you unprepared. I think that you should be confident. I think that you guys know more than you think you do. I think you guys are smarter than you believe you are, than you give yourself credit for. We have players. Let's say they've been in our organization for six months. They've been doing a fantastic job. They come to me one day and they say, Coach, I, I, I don't think I want to play anymore. I don't want to continue. Why not? You've been doing great. You really believe that? Yeah. Why haven't you told me? You know what? That's a fantastic question. I think for a lot of you, can probably relate to that. You're doing well at school. Your behavior's been spectacular. Your attendance at school has been wonderful. But nobody's telling you that you're doing a good job. You get it. You get it here and there from your teachers, maybe from your friends, maybe from your parents, but maybe not. From what I understand, after spending a few minutes with the principal this morning, you guys are doing a really good job. He believes that your behavior and your preparation for these tests that are coming up is the best that he's ever seen. His words, not mine, his words. He thinks you guys are going to do a good job. He has confidence in you. I know your teachers do, I don't have to ask them. That's why they do what they do. You guys know they're not driving to school in SLA. They care about you guys and about how you guys perform. So, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. I want you guys to keep it up, all right? Now, for the fun part. In a minute, I'm going to give away the rest of these soccer balls. But, I want to give you guys the opportunity to talk to me, to ask me questions. You can ask me questions about anything. You can ask me questions about my childhood. You can ask me questions about college. You can ask me questions about being a professional soccer player. You can ask me questions about being retired from being a professional soccer player. You can ask me questions about being a dad. I'm a dad, I have two little girls. Anything, but again, I beg, don't just blurt out. Raise your hands, and I will do my best to get as many in as I can. Right here in the front. Question was, why did I want to be a soccer player? Let's see. I was really bad at basketball. I couldn't hit the rim. It was 12 feet wide. I had really little hands, so football was out of the question. I couldn't catch it or throw it. I was scared to get hit in the head by the baseball. I grew up in North Carolina, there's not really ice, so I'm not playing hockey. So I started playing soccer. I enjoyed it. I was good at it, which helped. And the rest is history. The rest is history. 
Another question. Let's go way back here. Hey, how you doing? All right, good. What's your question? Okay. I've got two children, so I'm going to let you guess. Now, you're right. You don't have to be married to have kids, but you have to be married to wear a wedding ring, right? For the most part. I am not. Up top, young lady. Yes, ma'am. Why did I retire from soccer? So as a lot of you are aware, even the ones that don't play soccer, it involves a lot of running. I do not like running. Go figure, right? I just told everybody where else to go and then I didn't have to run. That was kind of my job. I played defense, played center back. So as long as I was good at putting people where they should be, I didn't have anything to do. I played for 11 years and for 10 months a year, for 11 years, that's all I did. Every single day, all I thought about was what am I eating? Am I drinking enough water? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I gonna be able to perform in training today? Because I couldn't take a day off. And it finally got to the point where I decided that, you know what, I've had a really, 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 really fortunate career. I've won some championships, I've played for the United States, I even played against Chelsea and Austin. Some of you know who that is. Maybe that makes, makes you smile. There wasn't really a whole lot left for me. I can still run around with my kids. I can still enjoy life. So I said, hey, you know what? I think it's time. And luckily enough for me, the Dynamo still wanted to keep me around and put me in the front office. Young man, what inspired me to keep going on my soccer career? Good one. Um, that is a good question. I've never really thought about what inspired me to keep going. I, I think more than anything, the love of the game. I love it. I love playing it. I love studying it. I love learning. Even now, I'm still learning a lot. I'm nowhere close to knowing everything. I know a good bit, but I'm still learning a lot. Watching, coaching, there's so much about the game that I don't know. And I think a thirst for knowledge is what inspired me and kept me going. To know more about the game. To be better at the game. To be able to make the players around me better. Now to be able to make these kids that are in our youth system better. Good question. Very good question. Right here. When I was a kid, when I was a kid did anyone give me the confidence to play soccer? Is that what you asked? All right. I like how you're relating to everything. Very good. My parents, my parents, and my coaches, and my friends, and again, I, I, was, I was fortunate that I was just good at it. I was just good at it. So success makes things easier, doesn't it? But it's not always easy to succeed, especially the higher you go. And the longer you do it, it starts to funnel, doesn't it? And that top, those top ones, it just gets a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. So it's, that I was fortunate. Yes, I had family and friends and coaches that, that inspired me to be confident. All right, guys, time for one last question. One last question. freshman year of college. Yes, I know. I understand. Up until my freshman year of college, my aspiration was to go to a good school, good college, get an education, and get a good job. That was my aspiration. There was no professional soccer league in the United States. I wasn't part of the youth national team. I wasn't going to go overseas and play. My aspiration was to go to college, get a degree, and get a good job. Now, I come from a family that didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of money. Uh, all my friends had Nintendos, and back in the day, even then, they're, they're still, I guess, uh, the converse, they, they were a hit thing. I didn't have Nintendos. 
I didn't have those things, you know. A couple pairs of jeans, not a whole lot to wear to school. You know, I got made fun of quite a bit. So I knew that my parents weren't gonna be able to afford college. So that I had to do something to get myself through college. Because they weren't gonna be able to help me pay for it. Again, luckily for me, I was able to get an academic scholarship. But I also got a partial, or excuse me, I was able to get a sports scholarship, but I was also able to get a partial academic scholarship. But that was on me, right? That was on me. I had to take the initiative to get the good grades, to put in the applications, to file for student loans. I had to do that myself, right? And I had to have the confidence that I was capable of doing that. So I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that can relate to that. His parents aren't going to be able to write one big check and say, there you go, have fun at four years of college. You're going to have to do it on your own. There's outlets there and there's people here who can help you find them. But you have to take the initiative if you want to do it. Okay? Time, right? I believe it's time for me to go. Uh, I want to do, you know, give away these chocolate balls real fast. Hold on. Okay. I want to do a little body of trivia for you guys. Again, raise your hand. Who knows who scored the first ever goal for the Houston Dynamo? Ryan, raise your hand. Raise your hand. No. Who scored the first ever goal? She raised her hand. She said no. Who knows? Do you know? No, but I appreciate it. Thank you. No man here. Ryan McBride. No, good guess. You know? Do you know? What is it? Brian Chin, correct, for the other ball. As a matter of fact, the first ever Dynamo game, Brian Chin scored four goals. And he's now a legend, well done, Dynamo game. All right. Where the Houston Dynamo played the MLS Cup Championship game in 2007. No, that's who we played though, we tried. Austin, no. Reliant Stadium, no. It is in Texas. In the blue. Chicago, we obviously wasn't listening when I said it is in Texas. Pasadena, California, we need to work on geography before we start. In the back. Come on, come on. 
Thank you guys for having me, I appreciate it. 